And now we can start. Welcome to my presentation. I am Arne Speckert from the company Climate and Environment Consulting, and I had some co-authors, authors Wolfgang Enke and Frank Kreinkamp, who is now working for a different company, meanwhile. And I will talk about climate change, circulation patterns and extremes. So this is the quintessence of a project in Saxony. And uh, we've been on this conference for several hours and now uh, people seem very tired and we will see what will be at the end of my presentation. So, of course, uh, I want to give you some motivation. I will talk about the relation between circulation patterns and extremes. I will talk about the new classification type by multiple correlation. Uh, the German abbreviation is Klamuko, very nice word. Then we talk about uh, extremes in climate projections. Als Herausforderung nach and as a challenge, emissions, air quality and circulation pattern uh, now and in the future when we have time for this. So something about the context, we don't talk about the details, but in Saxony, uh, the time series starts in 99, so there is a long row of projects that were always started in Saxony to see what will be about uh, the future climate and what is necessary for climate adaptation and uh, what about future extremes. So this was always the reason for these projects and it's a long row of projects and uh, Saxony was always very motivated uh, to have an advance in knowledge. So, when we did all this project, of course, we gained some experience. If we describe the changing climate by circulation patterns, it's very important and relevant. But when we uh, think about circulation patterns, we think of an uh, arrangement of uh, low pressure and high pressure. So, and arrangement, a pattern of something that we see on a map. And later on I will tell you that we will have to bend this term of uh, pattern. So these circulation patterns are good to describe mean values, but when we talk about extremes, uh, they are not so uh, useful for this. And that's why we changed the concept of uh, the patterns. We still use uh, the information from the global model, but uh, different than compared to Varix. In this project, we don't we don't uh, have a regionalization, but we use the global pattern to learn something about extremes. Cleavet, uh, this is the name of the project uh, for two years. The first phase, uh, I already talked about this two years ago uh, at the Annaberg Climate Days in 2012. We uh, questioned uh, the users in the different uh, state authorities, which indicators, uh, which values and measures are important for you. And then we identified uh, weather situations that are uh, connected to extremes. So about the temperature, late frost, uh, heat waves, precipitation, drought, flood, wind and air quality, and we try to estimate uh, about the performance of the old uh, processes, the old proceedings regarding the uh, projection of the prediction also of extremes. So this was a sobering result. So we made many tests. So we analyzed uh, how many hot days, uh, precipitation, the air quality, 
Klasse eingetreten ist, also so ein bestimmtes Zirkulation. So, it's also always like this, when we had a certain class, a certain äh, circulation pattern, oder then oder there are high levels of the rivers, or, or gut ermitteln. but it was not like Ausnahmen. this. There were some exceptions, hot days, there were some classifications of Hess Pressman, and the Dittmann classification, this was very good for strong winds, For Varix 5, there were some classes that were very good for predicting uh, icy days and hot days and tropical nights. So sometimes there was a class, a certain circulation pattern, but still there were no of the expected extremes. So this was the dilemma in it. And so when we had a classification with uh, different classes, with many different, different classes, so in the, und, um, da war das eben ganz sometimes we have 29 or 40 classes, and this is not so um useful. And also in the Cost 733 action, this was a comparison, and they hit the same wall. So this is a sobering uh, result. It doesn't really taste good. And that's why in the second phase of Cleavet, we made a new concept of the whole term out of atmospheric pattern. So now I ask you for some patience regionalen meteorologischen Extremen in Sachsen verbunden. Because we always ask the question what the bigger atmospheric uh, characteristics have in common with the regional meteorological extremes in Saxony. So the statistical uh, process that we use for this is the multiple correlation. So we make a cocktail like this with four different uh, parameters, uh, the duration of the day, uh, humidity, vorticity, and uh, the air pressure atmospheric pressure, and with this cocktail of the different parameters, we can describe uh, the soil temperature. And this is uh, what we want to use the multiple correlation for. We have uh, different parameters and we look uh, how we can describe a local parameter by a mixture of these different parameters. So these are different kinds of patterns. And in the lyrics of the meteorologists, uh, we call it a practicant. This is the temperature that we want to predict. And we use uh, predictors for this. So these are the different uh, parameters that we use to describe it. So the relative topography is a predictor, that means it helps us to predict a certain value, for example, the soil temperature. So there are more things that can improve the prediction. So the pattern is now a new concept. So these the are different parameters that we use for it. So um, it's like an image like a key and there are uh, different regionale klimavariable temperature. Notches and uh, these configurations of the notches uh, correspond to the different patterns. In diesem Bereich angedeutet so in this image, sagen wir mal 50 verschiedene for example, atmospherische Größen, there are 50 different atmospheric values, like vorticity, the temperature, the humidity, the relative topography, different atmospheric parameters. And this, for example, is the regional climate variable, for example, the temperature. And our goal is to select uh, some of these values and to describe the regional 
den Feldern. Variable. Welche raus? Wir nehmen gern vier Felder. So we call it screening. Ähm, wenn man zu viele so nimmt, hat man we das use Risiko, some of these parameters. So normally we use uh, four. The four most successful parameters, fields, can, that can uh, represent and describe this uh, climate variable. Also das war jetzt hier, sagen wir mal, unsere relative Topographie. For example, the relative uh, topography, so the length of the day. Man für jeden Tag, wie groß die Anteile And so for every sind. day, we also in Teil hier zu sehen. Uh, see und, the um, shares of this. So I sieht also, made this a little bit bigger. Braucht man ein klein wenig Retop, ganz viel Tageslänge. For example, und, äh, the first day so we need a little bit of Retop, uh, a lot of the duration also of the day, a little bit of uh, humidity. Und and so we have a time series, 15 days. And every day uh, these four die parameters so uh, have a different. Gehen. Also im so haben wir ja nur we want to have a classification right now. We only have four parameters, which are successful to describe uh, the temperature, for example. But we have to go further on so. to das have a specification. So we use a cluster method. Das Prinzip ist, uh, variant K-Means. Sucht erstmal die maximal unterschiedlichsten Fälle. So also you look for the maximum Man sucht die maximal difference. unterschiedlichsten Fälle. Das könnte hier so ein Kandidat sein, for wo example, der ein ganz lang ist. Und das könnte hier ein Kandidat sein, für einen anderen, der ganz lang ist. Und das könnte hier ein Kandidat sein, für einen anderen, der ganz lang ist. Und das könnte hier ein Kandidat sein, für einen anderen, der ganz lang ist. Und das könnte hier ein Kandidat sein, für einen anderen, der ganz lang ist. Und das könnte hier ein Kandidat sein, für einen anderen, der ganz lang ist. Das ist der klassische, das klassische Vorgehen von so einer Cluster-Methode. So Und dann sucht man, sucht man zu jedem Tag, so zu welchen von method. den zehn maximal unterschiedlichen passt der denn am besten. Und auf diese Weise look, gewinnt man Klassen. Uh, where the other ones belong to. Die haben wir hier fit in. And that way you create classes. Drin steckt. So in this äh, chart, chart you see a lot of things. Diagramm stellt, ist es also so eine Art Steckbrief der zehn entstandenen Klassen. So we have es gibt ten different classes. Balken, der ist a white bar, sometimes it's very small, sometimes it's bigger. Und die rechte Achse bezieht sich auf das, right was side, weiße Balken darstellt. This refers to the white aus, wie viele Tage dieser and Klasse it tells us how many days are in this ein, class. Es gibt also auch so ein Börsendiagramm, so ein, ein äh, kleiner schwarzes And then we have a small Black hier, was uns piece anzeigt, here welcher Wertebereich war denn das? Also es ist eine that Temperatur, tells us something about the value range. So, for example, the temperature in the first class is 15 to 17 degrees. In the second, it's 23 to a little bit about, uh, above 30 degrees and so on. Hier die, der, der blaue Balken sagt etwas so aus, the blue bar ähm, tells wie, wie us das 9, 95 Perzentil innerhalb der Klasse ist, also sozusagen about the 95 am Maximalwert uh, der Klasse, in, within this 95 der Werte der Klasse, welchen Wert so das in, als gehabt hat. Of, Und äh, uh, the values in this class. sagt noch was aus über die Streuung innerhalb der Klasse. And the small Nur so als Zusatzangabe. Man uh, kann also erstmal sehen, ist red eine Klasse, line this is the spreading in this class. So you can see if you have many members in one class or less members, this is what the whiteboard tells you, and then the amount. Sehr schön getrennte Wertebereiche gibt. So also you see that Klasse, the values are very, very nice divided. So this is a class davon. where you have days between 25 and 32. And ja, we made mal. this classes because of a certain arrangement of the das, predictors. Das war immer die Grundlage so this was the, the base so. for the different classes. Wir hatten früher schon, wenn wir so uns das angeguckt haben, als Gegenbeispiel mal, wenn man die Klassifikation verwendet, die Klassifikation dieser kleinen 
Diagramme hier drin and ist also every eine von den every one of this small charts und da hat man mal geguckt welche Temperaturen sind dann an den Tagen pattern. an denen das Muster Nummer 1 gewesen ist and und man sieht schon at the temperatures that we had also zum Beispiel die 15 so Grad this is not very nicely uh, divided so und you can have 15 degrees for example in many different classes in the has Prosovsky classification, but with our method of classification, it's uh, more divided. So the value ranges are divided amongst each other. So, was wir also gemacht haben, wir suchten nach so we were looking Größen, die kommen aus den for parameters, uh, atmospheric values, und suchten damit Regionale and we try to describe regional meteorological variables with it. So, for example, for the maximum temperature, uh, for example, the relative topography, so you can use the simple correlation, then it is 0.7 to 0.9, depending on the season. And when we use all four of them, the multiple correlation, then it's 0.9 or higher. With the precipitation, it's not as nice, but we were surprised that we have a, a coefficient between 0.4 and 0.5, and when we use uh, several parameters, it's 0.5 to 0.65, which is a, a high correlation for precipitation. So there are different parameters that are used, uh, irradiants. Of course, where you have clouds, there will be precipitation, the geopotential gradients. So that's important if you are near the high pressure area or the low pressure area and vorticity. So these are the parameters that are responsible for precipitation. We then looked at the extreme indicators in coordination with the Agency for Environment, Agriculture and Geology. I, I'm not going through all of them. It's not about a full set of extreme indicators, but it's a screen selection with some relevance for Saxony. We have a certain combined indicators. Wet Hot days, for example, high precipitation rates above 25 percent of precipitation, and at the same time uh, below 25 percent. We have dry, hot days where we have a lot of precipitation in the lowest quarter and a temperature in the upper quarter. These are combined measures benutzt werden. As uh, recommended by the Ministry for Environment, the Federal Ministry. Extreme indicators, extreme indicators with a single correlation only with the maximum predictor or the strongest predictor and the multiple correlation. Ein Ereignis ist, was and also whether it's an event which is rare in uh, itself, 7,200 days were analyzed, so vorkommt, and how often we had exceedance. Etwas deutlicher hervorgehoben, sobald eine Korrelation ist die Korrelation Coefficient of about 0.4. Ist, dann haben wir dem Ganzen einen Balken gegeben und wenn dann we use a bar in order to highlight the result and the red circle is for Correlation Coefficients higher than 0.5. So that means quite high hot days. Very cold days, late frost or strong winds in the summer half year uh, do not offer such a good picture, but strong winds in the winter or uh, oppressive um, heat, uh, wet heat is also quite predictable. And uh, cold, wet cold days and wet warm days uh, show a good chance for being pre predicted and Aber wir wollen ja in die Zukunft gehen. Im Augenblick haben wir das Ganze ja nur gemacht, um das Modell zu verändern. So these were the predictions in the past, and now it's about looking actually in the future to make our projections on the basis of a global circulation model. 
ECHAM5 run one scenario A1B. This, these configurations of predictors were used or were recognized. Every day we looked into the results in order to verify whether it coincides with what we saw in the past. In order to see whether the classes show a good uh, a certain trend, is there a decreasing or increasing trend for the future day by day? There are two examples which seem quite obvious. They are the dry, warm days. In order to derive a prediction from this, we must have a double effect at the same time. The class must have an increasing trend in order to come to a good conclusion and the class should at the same time uh, have days in itself with a certain frequency. So if we have a high value at this point, that means a high number of stations actually met the, or exceeded the criterion zero, means this is a class where we find days in which the criterion was not met. There are certain classes showing simultaneously an increasing trend and collecting days where the cla defined classes are quite frequent. These are the two uppermost we see. I'm innocent at this point. It's not my fault. Fault. In the middle, another candidate for good predictability. Class 7 might be a candidate, but the future the trend is not so strong. Here we say it's not so, not so many days. Uh, nevertheless, a contribution and class number 10 has a strong decreasing trend. And, but having almost no relevance for hot warm days. So these are not actually dry warm days. There's a second example, these are the tropical nights. The correlation coefficient, that means these are nights where the temp in which the temperature that does not fall below 20 degrees Celsius. It's a tricky thing to define it, to identify it very exactly. And now we have to find classes showing an increasing trend and containing uh, warm, hot nights, tropical nights in number. And so we say it's a weak increase in trend. And the other class, as we can see, there's no contributive uh, element. Not many tropical nights, so we can say weak increasing trend and not very robust. And when? We're now checking, looking into these indicators. Then we see red color means, on the basis of our investigation, a clear increasing trend. Yellow color means there is an increasing trend, but not very robust. As for tropical nights, and blue means it's a decreasing trend for the future. And here you say by the color, using this method, you have a certain choice. You can, we can actually predict extreme dry periods, hot days, oppressive, uh, warm, uh, wet heat. Then we have winter winds, tropical nights have a certain increase, but not very robust in the long run. Decrease, we sh should say, this is for uh, very cold days, ice below zero degrees. And for, the, and for the global warming, it's a normal decrease. Same is true for late frosts and for wet cold days. So there is a decrease. If there's no color at all, then we actually have to say we didn't manage to come to a conclusion for the future. No way on the basis of this method. But here's another area I'd like to present to you in order to show you the challenges behind our method. And that it's not just about using our method 
nutzbar sind, liefern to, können. To obtain robust results, the challenge was about air quality and a predictor, threshold exceedance for NO3 und PM10, also Ozon Ozone and PM10. Wir haben das Manko, es gibt relativ kurze Zeit rein. We have only short time series for PM10 beginning in 2000 only, uh, 2004 only. We have a strong local effects. You may remember this method actually is based on large-scale flow relationships, but they only have few relevance for local conditions. Not to forget when looking into the future. The atmosphere is just part of the interactive complex for the future. So that means uh, technology development in the future and legal regulations also have a strong impact in order to compensate and can may have effects compensating for the atmospheric influence. Wie eine Art Potential. Also We should bei consider this to be a kind of potential. We have atmospheric changing, atmospheric changing conditions, um, leave out all legal and technological uh, conditions. What would be the result? First of all, the present trends. Luftgütestationen in Sachsen zur Analyse. 36 stations were used for the analysis, air quality monitoring stations. You see 100 micrograms for NO2 per cubic meters and 180 micrograms per cubic meter for ozone. You have the graphs here. You see a slight increase in number of days with uh, exceedance of thresholds for NO2 and strong days. We see in high NO2 levels, we see quite constant graph. For PM10, it's a bit uh, similar. For the ozone curve, we can even see a slight decrease. When extrapolating this into the future, similar to as I showed for the dry warm days, then we look for we are looking for clear trends within a class and showing a clear positive or negative trend. Then on this basis, we have a quite a, not to say disappointing or less uh, optimistic uh, result. Ich habe hier als mal ein Beispiel. Da gibt es eine Klasse, die sowohl relativ hohen Wir haben eine Klasse, die has both relativ hohen relatively high threshold exceedance und die auch gleichzeitig for ozone and at the same time having a climatic trend which is in resonance with the others. There are similar resonances with other classes under this Klemuko classifications. Und ähm, als Fazit, was haben wir gefunden? Es gibt as a conclusion, what did we find? There are only weak correlations. We can find them. They are not very strong between large-scale atmospheric conditions and pollutants and contaminants. We have a time trend for certain classifications, which can be actually seen. There are trends, but it's not always very robust. And we still have to go a certain distance. And we come back to Klebet, pro the project which is very comprehensive, large-scale interface between climate change and classification of atmospheric conditions and extremes. Es wird als input benutzt, geht the input is, oh, we use as inputs the results from global circulation models without regionalization in order to find a correlation between global and regional. We know about the, our current knowledge as found on our current findings in terms of the changes of the average climate condition. There, this is quite good, we have good knowledge, but for extremes, it's quite new and not so 
Untersuchungen, auf welchen Robust. Sektoren, ja, bei welchen extremen Indikatoren. There are certain, uh, Indikatoren, we have to investigate Potential into the sectors besteht, where we can find a good potential for being able to predict the future. Then we would also have a robustness of the statements. And that would finally be linked with the communication of climate consequences, because we always have to indicate, or to we have to say, that there still is a lack of robustness for certain items. I, many, I thank you very much for your attention and patience. Many thanks. Many thanks also for having stuck to the time schedule because it's a comprehensive subject, of course. Are there any questions? Nuru. For correlation analysis, there are always a lot of questions around that, especially for multiple correlations. I'm very sorry, it's not, uh, I cannot hear the question because the microphone doesn't work. So I'm very sorry, I will have, I will translate, interpret the answer. So, the answer Many thanks, Mr. Schönwiese, for the very good point you made here. Of course, these are linear correlations, you're right. I, philosophically speaking, if we make assumptions on the background processes, then linear is the best way to line the up. But the seventh uh, grade, no, that's not so easy to have exponential functions or one uh, divided by x. So I think basically the linear correlation is the most conservative and best approach to be on the safe side. Because we do not actually know the natural phenomenon, the natural law behind it, the natural uh, rule behind it, and so we have to try to find a look into it. Of course, we could make it better. I, I'm sure, but linear is very meaning is a very good uh, basic approach. Okay. The second war, we have in the second is, yes, you're right. Weiter in der Vergangenheit we did not look far back uh, into the past, whether, in, in dem Sinne statistisch stabil ist. whether it is statistically robust, robust and stable. A bit we, we did a bit, for, for example, for the air pollutants. There we had certain trends also for the present development. It's not a plateau type for all uh, parameters and variables, but basically we did not it entirely for all of the parameters. Any further questions? To what extent? I'm very sorry you... you Eine erfolgreiche Konkurrenz sein könnte. Could it be a, co a successful Sie, competition? You, did you understand? No. I repeat my question. Die Frage ist, ob ein grundsätzlich is anderer mathematischer Ansatz, whether another arithmetic or mathematic approach, for example, neuronal grids, would be better ja instead of linear correlation. We have, uh, we have static parameters and dynamic. Uh, also das parameters and interactions between them. So sehr die, also, na gut, uh, okay, the you're right, there are two cores, two hearts, uh, two core elements. On one end we have the linear regression sind, um in order to uh, define or determine uh, the uh, Aber die ist ja items uh, important uh, for the predictions. Uh, ne, ne and the second is a clustering, aus dem which is an experience we have gained from the cost action, because uh, cluster and neuronal approaches might in the end or will in the end lead to the same result. All the path is different. So neuronal and clustering uh, are two uh, methods leading to the uh, a similar result. Mr. Jakobite would be the right person to, to uh, deep to uh, say it more profoundly because he will speak about it tomorrow. Und, uh, dann gibt's noch ein, ein There's a third argument, how comprehensive should be a project, we have to ma make applications, 
And when we say we have three projects and they ask us, could you reduce it to two projects? Because we actually thought neuronal approach would give us the same resu result as the clustering. I'm looking around. No, I have another question. Flood days, how did you define them? It's about hydrological basis, three-day precipitation as a trigger, trigger for, for floods. And are there any limits or thresholds? Three-day precipitation, okay, we can, but is there any level, uh, because a flood inducing precipitation is different from three-day precipitation. The definition, I do not know this definition, it's new to me, frankly speaking. We, we will discuss it later, uh, later on, okay, afterwards. Yeah, okay, let's speak about this later. Then many thanks for your interesting...